What up guys? So Tim, one of our subscribers, asked if I would do a video covering passive, active, and biamp. And I am going to do that video, but I thought it would be important to cover what a crossover is and what it does, and I'm going to throw a time alignment at the same time. The two most common kind of crossovers are going to be active or passive. Passive will generally be caps and coils, like in this Kenwood Exelon crossover. Then active means it's electronically crossed over, meaning from your deck, from your amp, a digital sound processor, or an old school electric crossover. There's two things you have to keep in mind when it comes to crossovers. The crossover point and the slope. Let's go over crossover point first. So say we choose 80 hertz for the sub and the mid. High pass on the mid, low pass on the sub. So since we chose 80 hertz, that doesn't mean that that speaker is not going to play anything below that. That all depends on the slope. 80 hertz will be the frequency in which they will start rolling off. If you have a 6 dB slope, 12 dB slope, 18 dB slope, 24 dB slope. Those are the most common slopes. All these numbers, dBs, are based on per octave. So say we chose a 24 dB slope versus a 12. That means the roll-off will be more sharp than if we chose a 12. There's four turns you're going to hear for crossovers quite often. That's going to be high pass, low pass, band pass, and subsonic or infrasonic, whatever you want to call it. High pass filter means it's going to play from whatever frequency you choose and up. Low pass means from whatever frequency you choose and down. If we're doing a bandpass filter, it means it's going to play from whatever predetermined frequency down to whatever predetermined frequency, and that's all it's going to play. So there's a bottom and a top. Subsonic and infrasonic filters are going to essentially bandpass for your sub. It's just not going to play the super low frequencies. So in a typical system, you're going to have a passive crossover for your mids and highs, an electronic crossover for the low end of your mid and your subs. So generally speaking, the tweeter will be high-passed because it's predetermined in this crossover. Whatever frequency they chose, it'll play that and up. Your mid will be band-passed because it's whatever frequency they chose in the crossover to whatever frequency you chose in either your amplifier, processor, or radio. And the sub will generally play just low-pass. It'll play whatever frequency you chose and down. If you're going to do a ported box, it's nice to have a subsonic filter or an infrasonic filter to cut off the frequencies that it should not be playing. So let's talk about time alignment or time correction, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same thing. Unless you have a McLaren F1 where you sat in the middle of the car, time correction is an amazing thing. Why? So if you're here in the States like I am, you're going to sit in the left front seat. Due to your seat position, no speaker is exactly the same distance as any other. Time correction will be measuring from one speaker to your ear, the other speaker to your ear, same thing with rears and subs. Doing this makes it so all the sound meets your ear at the exact same time. So if you're listening to some form of an audio recording and you position a speaker considerably further away than the other, you will notice an echo effect. Why? Because of the time delay. So to correct this, we're going to use time correction or time line. So we're going to measure from left front door speaker to your left ear, right front door speaker to your right ear, left rear speaker to your left ear. Same thing with the right rear, and of course also the same with the sub. So that's just a quick overview of crossovers and time alignment. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and as always, have a great day.